the advanced variant of Welcome To introduces roundabouts and new, more complicated city plans. This guide will be covering these additions to the game. For general tips and strategy on the base game, check out my previous video here. Roundabouts have the biggest impact on gameplay, so let's discuss them first. In most games, you should be aiming to use both of your available roundabouts. The negative 8 points may seem scary at first, but you get more than enough compensation for using them. Think of them as a bonus action to place a combined fence and bis. The tangible benefit is clear. For each roundabout you place, you require one less fence. Instead of taking that fence, you can instead score points from taking a park or pool or anything else really. The intangible benefit is the flexibility it gives you. Having a roundabout in the middle of your street will effectively double your options when it comes to placing numbers. You should consider not using your second roundabout in games that are likely to end quickly. You won't be able to get the full placement benefit from games that will end after 15 houses are placed, for example. In short games, the negative points may outweigh the positives the roundabouts offer you. Most of the time, using both will still provide great value, though. The new city plans can lead to some different types of games that aren't usually seen in the base game. You can, of course, still have a standard game in which you are racing to finish the three relatively simple city plans. In standard games, aim to place your roundabouts in locations that can divide up the estates needed for the plans. The closer to the centre of the street, the better. Your goal is to not waste any fences while remaining as flexible as possible. Roundabouts are often better used in the second and third streets. The extra houses make the flexibility more worthwhile, while the more valuable parks mean you generally want to be using these streets anyway. Make sure you count the number of houses required for the city plans. It may work out that a roundabout in the first street is better after all. The second type of game is one where you know the game will not end by city plans. The 5 bis and 7 temp agency plans require too much of an investment to be worth completing. Most rational players won't bother trying, and instead aim to end the game by filling all their houses. These games are where the extra house covered by the roundabout is particularly useful. Have a greater focus on number placement, as you will need to fill every house to end the game. Prioritise filling the street without a roundabout, as that will be the most difficult one to complete. Keep an eye on how many bisses your opponents are taking, and always try to stay even or ahead of them. If you can manage to end the game before your opponents have finished filling in their last few big estate sizes, you will probably win. Focusing on estate sizes of 5 can be a good idea for these types of games, as roundabouts in the second and third streets will divide your houses neatly into large groups. The third type of game is one where the card draw will dictate whether the game ends by city plans or by full houses. This plan requiring all the pools to be filled in two streets can be completed within the first six turns of the game with the right card draw. It's also possible that it can never be completed. If all the pools show up on the same turns, or the deck gets reshuffled before they appear, you may never see six pools in the game. In these types of games, your aim should be to complete the city plans, but fully be prepared to fill your streets. It can be a good idea to save your roundabouts to help with pool placement, sometimes even using both on the same street if the numbers are too awkward. Note that some plans can overlap, which can lead to shorter games. For example, if you have the plan to completely fill in your top street, you can also use that street as your parks, pools and roundabout street. Any plan requiring types of cards, like pools or temp agencies, can be overlapped with other plans. Regular estate plans can't be overlapped you would not be able to use the top street to complete your 5-4-1 plan as well. You will still score points for estates, so make sure you place your fences or roundabout before completing this plan. After it's completed, you will no longer be able to divide up the houses. That's all the tips I have for the Welcome to Advanced variant. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I make strategy videos every week, so if that's the sort of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and good luck.